Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hermitcraft. Today, we are on the hunt for a false symmetry. She is somewhere around here. We're currently invisible, as you can see. And she should be somewhere nearby here. I'm pretty, pretty certain. I gotta actually get out of this area, though. Kinda confined into this area. But yeah, we're gonna try and see if we can sneak up behind her. Plant down some TNT, maybe a pressure plate or two. And yeah, just see if we can explodificate her into the demise team. That's the idea here. Where is... I don't see her here. Looks like she may... She's actually streaming right now, so I'm watching the stream as well to figure out like where she's going, where she's at. She seems to have gone back to her base, it seems. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, there she is. There she is. There she is. There she is. All right, let's follow her. She's heading this way. I think she's going back to that wall area. Let's just see. We can spot her. This is a problem here. We need to break that out. There we go. Ah, uh, let's see. Okay, where's she coming down at? Ah, oh, she keeps moving up. She keeps moving up. She's coming down here. Here we go. She sees me. She sees me. She sees me. I'm running. I'm running. There we go, we named a few creepers around here the gray skin, so maybe they will actually get false if we can somehow draw her in this way. We're gonna try we're gonna try that method. We're gonna try that method. We're gonna try and lure her in. Oh she's coming! She's coming! She's coming! Here we go! We're going in! Yep, and so that's what happens when you mess with false guys. <laughs> you get blown up by your own name tags, Creeper. God dang it, I swear. Alright guys, so today what I think we're going to do, we're going to put away our invisibility potions because we're not going to need those. Uh, I might pop this speed potion though. There we go. That'll help us out a little bit. We'll also put our helmet on. And yeah, today what we're going to do is we're going to work on Concorp a little bit because... We've been sort of focused on trapping almost exclusively for like the past week or two uh, since we died. And yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to make some farms up here. Just some basic farms to supplement what we already have here at Concorp. So we're going to make a small small nether wart farm in this area, I think. So I'd like to make it so that basically like we have like different modules of nether wart so we can go through and activate them. It'll knock down all the nether wart in one module and then reset the, the soul center under, underneath. Uh, and then we can, you know, obviously go through and replant and then activate the next module, etc. So that's what we're going to do here, I think. So we're going to have kind of like a basic room similar to what we have over here at the, the chorus fruit farm over here, except not quite as deep as this. So it won't be quite as like dramatic of a drop down. But yeah, something similar to this where we'll have like rows of uh, nether wart growing and then we can activate each one individually. So that is the plan here Let's go ahead and dig out an area first though. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back All right guys, so we got ourselves a area dug out now. Let's take a look right on through here and voila we have a Big long rectangular room dug out and turns out we're actually kind of constrained here. We got some sugarcane farm redstone here that we can't really move uh, so we're gonna have to you know, not go past like this point right here. Uh, we also have the bubble columns. Bubble column to the storage room is actually right here. So this comes up right up here. So we're pretty close actually here with this nether wart farm to our storage area. And then we also have down here the quick drop to the bottom tunnels. So yeah, everything is kind of confined in this small area here. So we have to put the nether wart farm here. So I was planning to do a design that incorporated like a smart piston, which pushed soul sand back and forth to break the nether wart, and then we just replant it ourselves manually. But I think I've come up with something that is super cool that uses water, and also uses a cool uh, 
basically a dual tier like layering system to make a f just a really small fun farm. Uh, so yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to have, I think the farm start here. I've sort of laid down some blocks sort of outlining it. So this is going to be like the farm area here, basically like this. And also I should probably put a torch down right there. So nothing bad spawns. So something like this and it'll come out here and probably we'll have this go like into the wall a little bit here because I want to have four quadrants. Like I want to have one quadrant here. I want to have another quadrant here, another quadrant here and another quadrant here that can all be like toggled individually. So if we need like one stack, we just activate one quadrant and get, you know, a little over a stack of nether wart from that quadrant. Or we could activate all of them. Uh, that could also be an option we put in. All right, guys. So we got a little bit of the nether wart farm done here. You can see we have a little bit of nether wart growing down on this bottom level and some on the top, but not a whole lot. Um, so let me just go ahead and show you how this module here works because all the other modules are going to be exactly the same. So this module, the way this thing works is we have a button here that controls uh, when we want to uh, collect all the nether wart. So if I hit this button, you'll see water dispenses, all the nether wart gets knocked off the soul sand, and all the soul sand comes down to the bottom here. I just have to move left and right to pick it up. Once we pick it all up, hit the button again, water goes away. So that's basically all there is to it. And then to replant, all we got to do is flick this lever here. You'll see the lights go off, the trap doors come down, and now we can just move to the left and to the right to plant down the nether wart just like this. And we can of course hold down right click and plant it in quick succession. And there we go. Once we're done, flick that again, light, lamps come on, and we're good to go. So the top is pretty much the same as the bottom. Again, dispensers will dispense water and that will flow this direction, dropping the nether wart to the same location as the bottom section. But uh, unlike the bottom, the top actually relies on this lever here on top of lamps on top. So if I flick this off, you'll see the trap doors uh, open up and I can actually walk underneath this uh, without being slowed down and yeah, I can actually push up against these trap doors right here so it easily allows me to plant any and all uh, nether wart on the top section here. And once I'm done, flick this down and it closes that so that when the nether wart pops off, it doesn't get caught on the trap doors or anything. So that's really good. And of course, this glass is going to be built up higher like this so that, you know, nether wart can't get caught anywhere and it all flows down to me over here at the end. So that's pretty much how it's going to work. I really like this sort of tri level design here. So we got three levels in very quick succession here. So top level, we got the pathway level, and then we got the bottom level here. So yeah, it should allow me to move around here quickly and replant quickly and harvest nether wart quickly as well. So I'm going to make a couple more of these modules here. So we're going to have four in total. This is the second one, and there'll be another one on the opposite side uh, over here where I have to dig out all this stuff. So let me go ahead and keep working on this, and I'll be back. Okay, guys, so we've made some more progress here on the farm. Let's take a look. So... We got, of course, all the quadrants built now, and all the buttons now work for the water. As you can see right there, if we just get on up this ladder here, you can see. Yep, right there. And then same thing over here. These are working independently of one another, so that's fantastic. We can hit that and that, and those should go away. Very good. All right, cool. We also have these cool ladders now, uh, which lead us to the second level up here. We also got these lights here and yeah this is controlling this entire section of trapdoors and of course the other one does the other ones so yeah that's that uh we also yeah decorate a little bit we got some more black terracotta down we got more lamps down of course uh we got the other side of this tri-level thing done we can also jump this gap which i think is pretty cool um and then we have this button here which is sort of the master button this should control all of the dispensers uh, around here so let's just press this and see and it has missed this one for some reason <laughs> let's see why that is not exactly sure why that would be but we're about to find out uh let's see i don't know why that would be that's a bit weird is it because i don't have water in them. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's why. 
they didn't fire. I gotta get four more water buckets, that's why. But then this should turn all these off at the same time. So, yeah. Perfect. That's great. So that's a good way we can just harvest all these at once if we need to. And then we can just go around and replant uh, via uh, yeah, removing the, uh, the trap doors. So, cool. I like it. Anyways, uh, only things left to do, obviously, get those four water buckets in there. That is priority number one. Uh, the next thing we got to do is finish off the roof here with the stripped acacia logs. And then we also probably want to put uh, red nether brick up here, up there, and probably along this back wall, too, to bring in a little bit of red color to this place, uh, similar to the nether ward itself. So... I'll go ahead and finish up that stuff, and I'll be back once this farm is done. Oh, yeah. The red nether brick definitely was a good choice. Definitely was a good choice. Complements the nether wart quite nicely, I must say. And you see we have it on the roof here with some glowstone going down the center. And also on this far wall right here with some glowstone behind some black stained glass. So, yeah, this farm looking mighty fine, if I do say so myself. Absolutely loving the way this thing looks, and this farm is really simple, but it's also quite practical. And it also, yeah, it makes it easy to replant and harvest however much you need. So, like, one of these modules is one stack, so, yeah, you can harvest just one, or you can harvest all of it at once via this button right here. So, a lot of options with this farm, and looks pretty cool, so I am very happy with it, and I think now we can call this farm complete. So, with that, let's go ahead and head on back to... The storage area, we gotta put some stuff away here. So we'll just slide on up here. Put some stuff away and see what else we're gonna do today. Alright guys, so I think what we're gonna do for the rest of the episode, we have a challenge that Isuma made for us a while back. Now, I know we're not technically on the alive team anymore, you know, we're, we're on the dead team now. But it would still be a fun idea, I think, to do these challenges. You can see the villagers all heading out to work right now, that's awesome. Uh, so I think if we make our way around here and past the melon, or not the melon, the pineapple farms rather, past our, past our uh, watermelons and our some of our nether wart areas, uh, over here, yeah, over here, we have ourselves a challenge from Asuma. So we're going to try and do these challenges because it could be kind of fun. Uh, so let's get over here and see what this is about here. So let's look at the book here. It says, Four Mr. Invincible Challenges. Dear Cub Fan, to continue your dance with death, I have bestowed upon you four challenges. If you choose to take them up, a totem may be your prize. However, there is a twist. Or there is a twist, however. Uh, if you're not feeling confident, you can use the totem during the challenge. However, you would then not be able to keep it after. Descriptions of the four challenges are in each barrel. Good luck or not. Signed, your demised friend, Isuma. Cool. So, yeah, this was actually made almost at the exact same time I made the the, uh, the, the challenges for myself as Mr. Invincible. Um, so, what I think we're going to do, each one of these challenges uh, has a book and a totem in here. Uh, and so, I think what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and do each of these without the totem. If we make it through the challenge, then... What we'll do is we will basically uh, keep the totem and give it to one of the people that we bet on to win Demise. That's what we'll do. However, if we die during the challenge, then we'll burn the totem of Undying so that nobody else can use it and nobody uh, gets the totem uh, from here on out. So it looks like Asuma has assigned difficulty ratings to each of these. So let's just go through them in order of increasing, increasing difficulty. I think this is probably the hardest one. Yeah, okay, this is the hardest one. So let's start here. So, ghast hunting. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. So, this challenge requires you to kill three ghasts in the nether using your wings and sword. No potions or apples allowed. Okay, challenge accepted. Gotta be careful with this one, though, because we don't want to die to lava. How's our wings looking? Our wings are looking good. Tell you what, I'm so confident we're going to do this, I'm not even going to take my gear off me. I'm not even going to take my gear off me. So, let's head to the nether. Gotta kill three ghasts in melee combat. All right, we're gonna double up on fireworks here. Actually, you know what? We're gonna triple up on fireworks here just in case we get unlucky with the gas spawns. Although from the sound of it, does not seem like we're gonna like be long before we actually find some ghasts. Uh, so let's get everything else, like all the weapons and stuff off our hotbar. All we need is the rockets here. So let's just come on out here. I think I hear some ghasts down here. 
Oh, there's one right there. It just instantly despawned. There's one. That was easy. <laughs> Alright. Did we get any uh, gas tears? Got some gunpowder. A little bit of XP. But let's keep moving here. Just gotta search for gas. The hardest thing is actually finding gas themselves. This is the old bridge and stuff out to... the new Hermitland area. The old pathway down there. Let's see. Make sure we don't crash into anything. Let's come out here. This area should have some gas, you'd think. Maybe. You know what happened here, guys? The gas saw me slay one of their own, and now they're nowhere to be found. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm flying through here. This is prime real estate for guests to spawn. There's the tunnel. Any guests? No? No guests. <laughs> oh, there's one. That's alright. This guy wants to take me on, but he died too. Also, some gas tears. Very good. Alright, that's, uh, that's two ghasts down. Let's try one more. One more. Uno mas. Uno mas. Where are you at, ghast? Come on. Come on. There he is. There he is. Over the lava. Oh, oh. We got to boost out. We got to boost out of here. Alright, we're good. We're good. Where'd he go? Oh, he's still down there. He doesn't see me. Coming in from above. There we go. There's three ghasts down. So, challenge number one completed. We get the totem, and we'll give it to one of the hermits that we bet on for demise. So, first challenge is complete. Let's go ahead and head on up our water columns here and out the dock area. See what the second challenge will be. And I'm going to actually sleep through the night here real quick. This guy, <laughs> Jacob Jungle, making his way back to the apartment building. He's working late tonight. Good man. Get in there, though. You too. You too. There you go. Alright, get in there. Get in there. <laughs> There's kind of like a crisis at night here sometimes when the villagers all try to go to <laughs> go to beds. Like, look at this. They're like, you took my spot. You took my spot. Anyway, we're going to sleep here. And we should be able to wake up tomorrow. All these other villagers wake up. Got to get out before the morning rush. They all rush down these... Narrow corridors out of the buildings, and we'll see what the second challenge is over here. Looks like there is a diamond challenge of some type. Yes, diamond challenge. Hot swap diamonds. Let's see what this one is. So we do get this totem of undying. Uh, so, yeah, we'll keep that in there. Uh, let's see what this one is, though. This says, this challenge requires you to obtain one diamond ore on a fresh caving expedition. You must start at the surface, and your only weapon can be a single bucket of a single lava bucket. No potions or apples allowed. Okay, so... Yeah, we just gotta basically go... Diamond ore caving. Effectively. With lava. As our weapon. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure I actually have lava left. Let's go to the storage room real quick. So I didn't have any lava buckets, so we're having to look for lava elsewhere in the world. Uh, this is actually our, our Kill Tango contraption, if you guys remember that from a while back. Right here. Had an anvil fall from there, so that's pretty cool to see that again. Uh, let's see, any lava around here? Any lava fall or any lava pool? There's got to be one somewhat nearby, right? Usually they're pretty common. Let's head over to the plains over here, see what we can find. Oh, there's one right there. Bingo. Also, there's a random portal right here. <laughs> okay, this is perfect. Alright, got our lava. That's going to be our primary weapon. I'm also going to put away some other stuff, like this stuff here. There we go. And I'm also going to grab a few more golden carrots, just because we might need some, depending on how this goes. But, yeah, our lava bucket is our only weapon, so we will see how we do. Might be kind of rough. You know, I can also put away my sword, actually. Only thing we need is really the pick. <laughs> pretty much, so there's that. We got a whole bunch of torches and just some very basic gear, just some chainmail gear. So let's find a let's find a cave here somewhere and just go down and not fall into lava. Hopefully, there's bound to be some caves around here somewhere, like the start of some caves. Don't really want to start in a mountain biome because that means you have to go down like another 20 blocks. But let's see, maybe like right here would be good. 
Oh, and already regretting this decision. <laughs> Immediately run into a creeper. Let's see if we can take this dude out. With lava here. Maybe? Yep. Rip. Rip creeper. <laughs> this might be slow going. We'll try this cave and see. But this could be very slow. Gonna have to be pretty agile here. Okay, we'll light this up. Let's go down. Maybe this will lead us just straight to diamonds. Who knows? <clears throat> you never know. So far, so good. We are the only person on the server, too, which is kind of a disadvantage. Because on servers, the mob cap is actually higher than single player, so... You actually can run into more mobs at times. This is a pretty linear cave system, and it doesn't go even down to diamond, does it? Nope, just comes back out. Okay, well, first cave system, no good. On to the next one. Aha, this looks promising. This looks promising. Lots of caves popping up right here. And looks like they go down fairly far. Let's let's give this a shot. Let's give this one a shot. This looks this looks potentially promising. I'm just going to blindly jump in here. Hopefully nothing too bad. No, okay. Still keeps going. Oh, this is going to be really bad with the lava here if there is mobs. Okay, let's just keep going. Stay on the lower level. Oh god, okay. Just put that down there as defensive measure. Okay, well, <laughs> we got lucky there. We got very lucky there. Oh, oh yeah, that's not how you do it. Okay, whoo. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Got to rush through these caves as quickly as possible if you can. Ah, oh, this just goes back up. Dang it, it doesn't go down to lava level. Or diamond level. Oh, here we go, here we go. More dudes. Burn. Burn. Oh, no, he went right by it. What a guy! Okay. Uh... Well... Um... Um... <laughs> what do I do now? Alright, we gotta get that llama back. Tell you what we're gonna do. We're just gonna rush the creeper and try and ru brush right by him. Let's see if he comes toward me. Okay, he's coming toward me. Alright, rushed him. He's gone. <laughs> he's self-eliminated. Awesome. Uh, let's check up here. Just to make sure there's nothing coming from behind us. Also, this could potentially open up somewhere. Okay, nothing there. Good. Good to know. Looking for that one diamond ore. Looking for that one diamond ore. Alright, here is the other creeper. Let's put this down. There we go. He's, he got caught in that one that time. Very good. Okay. Whew. Crisis averted there. Well, guys, so far we've encountered two different cave systems, neither of which have actually gone down to diamond level. What's up, Creeper? How's it going? Have fun burning in lava. Very good. Also, RIP that bat. RIP that bat. Okay, exploring another cave here. Oh, let's place this... Oh, he went around it. All right, tell you what. Woo! We just... We just tanked that, guys. <laughs> Now I hope I don't die in this with that brief bit of lava there killing me. Oh, are you kidding me? Come on now. Wow, that's a lot of damage from just one encounter with the lava. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Do you see what I see up there, guys? Because I see a creeper that's about to get burned. Nope, he's not. Okay, he's fine. He's just wandering. He's minding his own business. Don't wanna don't wanna disturb him, you know? Uh, okay, let's see what we got here. Ooh, yeah, okay. This might be the ticket. Actually, I'm gonna try and jump it over here. Oh, yeah. Easy money. Man, we're taking risks here, guys. We are taking risks. Alright, guys, so we're down close to diamond level now. We're at diamond level now. Level 15. We found gold and lapis. Fantastic. There's also a mine shaft nearby. Some redstone. I'm gonna mine out all this stuff, because why not? We're down here doing this challenge. Might as well get some extra resources while we're at it. Very good. Okay. Got to be very careful here because this is the mine shaft I was talking to you guys about. There could be cave spiders about. Okay. Oh! 
Please no. Please no. Oh my god, that was so close. Oh man, that was close. Whoo, I thought we were gone for sure. I thought we were gone for sure. Okay, we're good here. Man, still no diamonds. Just trying to light this area up as best I can. Any diamonds down here? There's got to be diamonds here. Come on, this is well into diamond level. This is the easy money diamond level right here. Only iron and coal, of course. Typical. Come on, diamonds. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? I think I saw a creeper. And there is a creeper for sure. Yep. Just had to keep going. It's another bit. Oh, look out! Oh my, okay. Well, this has certainly heated up a little bit. Excuse me, just gonna put that down there. There we go. Zombie died, very good. Alright, come on. Tell me there's diamonds. Tell me there's diamonds. Tell me there's diamonds. Come on, lava. Go away. Alright, perfect. Diamonds? No. No diamonds. Bogus. I'm convinced there are no diamonds left here on Hermitcraft, guys. It's all... Oh, look out. Hello. Okay. It's all just an illusion. TFC has been everywhere. TFC has, has mined a server dry of all diamonds. <laughs> a creeper killed another creeper right there. Do you see that? That was awesome. But yeah, this has been a saga that we're still on currently. Oh boy, okay. That's a lot of... That's a lot of mobs. Oh, that's a lot of mobs. I'm just gonna keep running. Until we hit diamonds. I've come to the conclusion here that Diamond Ore is a conspiracy created by Notch in the summer of 2009 to fool people into thinking they could have something nice. When in fact, they cannot. Yeah, I've literally found, like, a bunch of other ores, but not a single block of diamond. And we're down at diamond level. This is level 15. This is like a prime cave system to find it at. Still nothing. Look at this. More gold. More gold. That's not what we needed. Oh, there's a lot of creepers down that way. Are they protecting some diamond ores? Oh, they are protecting! There is diamond ore down there! Oh my god, what the heck? Um, okay. So, yeah, um, let's do this. So, these creepers will not actually cross this. Oh my god, how are there so many creepers right by the diamond ore, man? There we go. Four diamond ore, that's it. That's all there is. I'm out. I'm out. We are out of here. We are out of here. The four creepers protecting the diamond ore. Okay, we gotta get out of now of the cave. So we gotta go back up. Shouldn't be too hard, I don't think. Yeah, we're making our way out here. There we go. Okay, we're, this is the way out, I think. Yeah, sweet! Alright, so we got four diamond ores, finally, at long last. And, uh, yeah. Challenge. Challenge completed. So there we go, guys. This challenge has been completed. Got the four diamond ores, and that was kind of wild that there was actually four creepers around a diamond ore. They don't actually spawn more frequently around diamond ore, but sometimes it can definitely seem like it. <laughs> Including in that instance right there. Anyways, time to fly back to the main island and see what the third challenge is. Alright, flying on in, and yeah, we still have to clear our inventory from the from this challenge, but we get that totem now. Let's try the next one, Doc's Phantom Run. Let's see what this one is about. Uh, this challenge requires you to complete Doc's Phantom Run again, this time with only your demise armor. So only what we got on now. Iron helmet, chain leggings, chain boots. Whew, okay. That one could be a challenge. So let's head on out to Doc M's area. And we'll put some stuff away first, obviously. Uh, but yeah, we'll try Doc's Phantom Run with just this basic armor. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we're out here now at Doc's Island. Doc's Mushroom Island, that is, next to the warm ocean biome, where Doc spent many a day in early Season 6 uh, making this Phantom Run minigame you see right over here. So we're just going to make our way over here. Probably going to put all of our stuff in the ender chest, I believe. Uh, let's see. I guess I'll put this... 
I'll put this here. Yeah, we'll put that there. We'll put everything in there. We don't need. And we'll also take the wings, I think, off. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Perfect. Okay, I think we're ready to go. So, let's see. Pre uh, read instructions carefully before entering. Okay. Let me... <laughs> There's a locker room. Oh, there is a locker room. Nice. Sweet. Okay, cool. Let me read the instructions here again just to make sure I know how it works, and then we'll go in. So the rules here actually say to go in naked without any armor, but Asuma's challenge is we complete this with only our demise armor. So I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. We're going to try it the way Asuma wanted us to try it with the armor on. So here we go. Three, two, one. There we go. We come on in. I think we stand here. Okay, and then... Yep, we walk forward and let the phantom see me, I think. And it's kind of seeing me. It's kind of trying to go up to the ceiling or something now. Alright, so what's supposed to happen here is the phantom is supposed to see me and then come toward me and activate a tripwire, but that seems to not be happening at all. So, yeah. So unfortunately, it looks like the phantom's AI changed between 113 and 114, and that causes issues for persistent phantoms that persisted since, like, the beginning of the server. So, kind of unfortunate. Uh, I guess we'll just have to pick up all of our stuff again and leave, and I guess we'll just call this one incomplete, because, yeah, it's not really uh, possible to complete it since the mechanism to start the phantom run has broken. So third totem, I'm actually going to say, since we couldn't technically complete it, we're just going to go ahead and, you know, just toss it into this lava bucket here. Just like this, and that, and that. There we go. RIP that totem. Okay, final one. Let's see. Green's Elytra Course. Green's Elytra Course. This challenge asks you to complete Green's Elytra Course with only your wings. No other armor is allowed. Ooh, that's going to be... Ooh, this... I take it back. This one might actually be harder than the mining one. This one might actually be harder than the mining one, but we'll give it a shot. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we got ourselves to the shopping district and we're up here at Green's Elytra course. There's a big hole in the floor for some reason here. Not exactly sure what happened, but yeah, that's there. Uh, we got all of our armor taken off and we got our elytra wings, rockets, and some golden carrots in case we need to regen some health. There's our armor in there. We took everything else off, so we're ready to do this. By the way, I think this is actually the first time anybody has run the Elytra course since we made the modification to the tree farm area, if we make it that far, so that's cool. Uh, most people usually do this with diamond gear, but we're doing it with uh, no gear. So here we go, three, two, one. Gonna fly on down here, come around, come up. Gotta take a big wide curve there, we gotta dive here. Down through there, whoops, I actually landed right here. <laughs> oh well. Shouldn't make too much of a difference, I don't think. You come down this way, come down through here, and dead. Okay, well, there you go. That's what happens when you try the elytra course without anything on it. Awesome. All right, so the final totem has to be eliminated. There we go. All right. So what? <laughs> what the heck happened there? This totem was definitely gone and came back from the dead. All right, is it gone for good? Okay, it's gone for good now. That was that was truly a totem of undying right there. That was the Mr. Invincible of totems of undying right there. Anyway, uh, we do have two totems that we got from completing two of the challenges. Um, so we're going to give those away to some of the hermits, and I think I know who we're going to give them to. All right, guys, so the first hermit we're going to give the totem of undying to is Mumbo Jumbo. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to build up a little area like this. We're going to put down the chest here first. It's going to be a trap chest, and there's going to be a totem of undying right in there. But then we're also going to give him a TNT right there. So that if he opens this chest, well, <laughs> it's going to be... Somewhat of an explosion here. So, yeah. Should be a good time. Should be a good time. We're also leaving a sign that says, Dear Mumbo, you got this. Hashtag Mumbo wins demise. Hashtag Dark Horse. And there we go. That is now delivered to Mr. Mumbo Jumbo. Now we're going to go out to New New Hermit Land because the other hermit we have to gift a Tone of Undying to is Keralis. So let's head out there right now. 
All right, guys, so the chest is now down. It's right outside of his barn. I don't think he can miss it. And it says, Corrales, you may need this. Hashtag, look into my eyes to win demise. So hopefully Corrales will use that totem of undying to survive any and all things that will befall him and win us some diamonds for our own personal gain. So that is the hope, at least. Uh, in fact, we might want to head on over to Death Bets and increase our bets on Mumbo and Corrales since we're leaving them these totems. All right, guys, tell you what, here's what we're going to do. Since we gave them Totems of Undying, we're going to add another stack of diamonds to our bets on Mumbo and on Corrales. So we're going all in on both these guys. There we go. Perfect. So, yeah, we now have, how much is that? 80, 70, 82. Is that right? I think that's right. Yeah, 82 diamonds on Corrales and on Mumbo. Yeah, that works. That works for us. Perfect. All right, we'll put these diamonds back. And with that, guys, I think I'm going to have to call that an episode for today. If you enjoyed today's episode, please do leave a like and be sure to subscribe. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Cub. Goodbye. <laughs>